Speaking of insulation, insulation systems reduce heat flow in and out. They don't stop it, they just reduce the heat flow. Air sealing reduces the air leakage in and out. So for instance, if you have insulation, but you have lots of air going through it, it's not going to really do the whole picture. It's going to do some insulating factor or, or contribute to, to uh, uh, heat reduction or heat loss, but the airflow through it is going to reduce its ability. By putting in the air sealing, you're reducing that air that comes in. And we go back to the diagram. Why spend your cash to heat the cold air that's coming in only to leave out the other, to leave the other side of the building with your cash? If we take a lot of the, the uh, passive solar uh, initiatives, such as opening up the south uh, to uh, bring in more sun in the wintertime, if we put in the natural ventilation systems, if we have the proper overhangs, if we put in insulation in the proper place, if we put in air barriers, if we put in thermal mass, things of this nature, uh, without really, really changing any of the systems, we'd still have a boiler or an air conditioner or whatever that system is, maybe smaller sized. But in essence, when we've created those uh, systems and put them in place, we could save 49% or for a heating and cooling load. Now, in some cases, if done properly, you can save as much as 75% off your energy expenditure. And if you think about what you're spending on electricity and fuel combined, and if you think about saving 75% of that, and saving it every year, basically free, I think you have a tremendous win-win uh, uh, situation there. We're saving the... Uh, helping to protect the environment as well as putting cash in our pocket. When we look at a green building, whether it be for a school, uh, an office building, or a, um, uh, a warehouse, or anything, uh, there is more efficient uh, use of that space in terms of what's going on inside. So if it's a school, we have uh, better test scores. We have a healthier environment. If it's a commercial building, we have better sales, less employee turnover. And so a lot of these factors come into play, which are in addition to saving the planet and, and putting cash in our pocket. These are the side benefits. For instance, Walmart had a situation where they had a large space, like their, all of their buildings, and they had skylights in one area and not in another area. And they simply had a lot of skylights with a lot of direct sunlight coming in. It was diffused, so it was not, it was not a really hot area, but it brought in daylight is the main issue. And so they had the, the um, regular sales and racks of uh, clothing and so forth under those uh, skylights. And they found that whatever they placed under those skylights sold better. They actually sold a lot more materials of uh, clothing and, and accessories or whatever it happened to be when they were placed under the skylights. And they said, well, let's conduct an experiment. Let's take the stuff that really doesn't sell well from the other end of the store. Let's move that here, and let's place this stuff that's really selling well in the back corner of the store. And the same thing happened. Whatever was under the skylight sold much better. And so it comes down to daylighting. And if we can bring daylighting into, and this is now has to be controlled, so we don't have that heat gain, too much heat gain, because that makes it uncomfortable. But if we can bring daylight into schools, kids actually have a situation where they'll learn more, they'll be more comfortable. In uh, retail, it sells better. In office spaces, there's less turnover, less people feeling sick because they have daylight and also if they have views in an office where they can be working on their computer screen, working on ledgers and so forth, but then have a place to look out. That change of the visual from the very close to the very far gives them a break, it's, it's, it enhances that, that time that they spend in, in the office. 
benefits of green and energy efficient buildings. Well, we've talked about some of those and there's a, a method of looking at this from a slightly different perspective. A building's life could be 75 years, could be 50 years. So whatever that, let's say this is the 75 years. Take the cost of construction and spread it out maybe for 30 years where the mortgage is and maybe a refinance. But again, that's where we, we're talking about. And this is not, I'm not using any specific numbers, it's just relative. The cost, if this is a commercial building, office building, the cost of operating this building goes up every year. If it's an office building, the cost of employees within that building with their benefits and sick time and vacation and everything else that goes on and, and turnover, we have to now retrain new employees. That goes up as well every year. So what, have, what has happened? We've, we've built the building that's going to last that many years, but the cost of operating that building and the cost of retaining employees goes up every year. If, on the other hand, we put in some green initiatives which add a little percentage to that construction cost, we can then reduce the operating cost as well as the maintenance cost because we're going to select materials which are, uh, take less maintenance, they wear better and so forth. And if we can help to retain employees and get greater production, if it's a factory and so forth, well, look what we've saved. We've saved that and that by going to a green building. So it makes a lot of sense to spend the few extra dollars up front and we saw earlier that it could be 5%, 6%, it could be 7 tenths of a percent for some initiatives, but your gain is tremendous. So the return on, on investment is enormous. For the environment, we're also making a huge impact. We're saving, we're conserving natural resources. We're protecting the environment, reducing solid waste and landfills, because if you build efficiently, there's less materials going into landfills. And all of this is to protect our children's future. So in, in two ways, we go back to that survey that was taken, <clears throat> where people looked and they said, well, 19% was uh, protect our children's uh, future, um, and no, it was 21%. 19% was to save on the cost of energy. Well, the green building does both. We protect our, f our children's future and we're putting cash back in our pocket. And over many years, it comes out to a very large amount.